Okay, and this is another uh, illustrative case, a 10 year old female who's had vomiting and headaches, had this um, condition of congenital hypopituitarism or growth hormone deficiency. There's, there's a literature on this. I've only seen a few cases in my career so far that I've been aware of. And uh, this child had um, actually a very small pituitary gland and had a deficiency of the pituitary hormone output uh, from the hypothalamic pituitary axis, underwent uh, the Chiari decompression for what you see here, and um, laminectomy and tonsil, just like I did and like I showed you, and this is uh, back a number of years. And after the first um, surgery, we still had uh, a syrinx uh, present. It really didn't get much better. She was relatively asymptomatic with this syrinx. There was no scoliosis, but um, this was a problem, I thought. So I wondered what we should do next. Uh, we waited a little bit. She got headaches again. You can see that we had decompressed, but um, have some fluid back here for sure. So we went on to do a, a repeat uh, decompression, uh, C2 laminic derplasty. Um, and there's the fluid now. It's gone up in, in size that you can see. Um, and the syrinx came down. If you compare left-hand side to right-hand side, the syrinx is smaller. So I thought, yeah, we're on our way. This is like six months later. I thought everything's under control. No problem, but let's see what happens on the next slide. So again, this was May, but when we followed up in August, she was asymptomatic, but her syrinx came back again, despite having even more fluid um, in the area where you'd expect to have good circulation of CSF. So um, we looked for a, a disturbance of the cerebral spinal fluid pathways. And if you look on the left-hand side, the ventricles, before the first uh, surgery looked like this, but then after the second surgery, you can clearly see the difference. They were getting uh, larger in size. So here's the sagittal MRI scan uh, showing absence of the pituitary there, but also you know, some weird stuff happening down here, the fact that the ventricles had gone up. So I decided that we would do something called an endoscopic third ventriculostomy. Some of you may have seen that procedure, but it's an attempt to bypass obstruction of the brain fluid pathways by avoiding a, a shunt placement, so a ventricular peritoneal shunt, avoiding that, and doing an internal bypass by making a stoma or a hole at the floor of the third ventricle and allowing fluid to pass. And we did that. Her symptoms got better, but her syrinx still uh, persisted. So um, I'll just stop there for a second because uh, that case was very interesting. and. Um, she had been on um, growth hormone replacement. Um, and um, I think it was until such time that she got to reach skeletal maturity and she came off of growth hormone replacement. When she came off of growth hormone replacement, for some reason, I guess things had normalized for her or whatever. And she ended up um, getting the syrinx better spontaneously. It just got better by itself. And as I said, she was relatively asymptomatic at that point. I wasn't that worried or concerned about her symptoms, but just the weirdest case that uh, the syrinx that you see here had gone away spontaneously. Something to do with the, you know, the way that her, her maturity occurred eventually that she didn't need growth hormone anymore. And um, that was a, a fascinating case to me. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.